Sound the klaxon. That is two players that Ole Miss needed returning to practice this morning. We'll tell you about that in just a little bit. And also we'll go over the keys to Ole Miss getting the win in Tuscaloosa against the Alabama Crimson Tide. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Also, I want to let you know the Rebels play the Alabama Crimson Tide Saturday at 2.30 Central. The next evolution of an explosive offense should be on tap for us to all witness. Catch every play of the Rebels' home team broadcast with SiriusXM on Channel 191 or on the SXM app, searching Ole Miss Rebels. The Locked On Ole Miss podcast is on there as well. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis, and this is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, and I hope everybody is having a good time today. We're going to start off with a little bit of good news. Um, Coach Kiffin, in his press conference yesterday, voluntarily announced that Trey Harris and Caden Priestcorn is out at practice. So that means we can all assume that they are going to play. So we can adjust our expectations based off of that information. Trey Harris famously has eight catches this season for five touchdowns. Um, so between him and Jordan Watkins, that makes the passing game really effective. And then Caden Priestcorn adding in, that's another person that Ole Miss can count on in the middle of the field. Um, Kyron Heath is doing a good job, not getting a lot of footballs at the moment. But from all accounts, Caden Priestcorn has kind of been a dude in the preseason camp, so we can see exactly what they have worked on and what kind of a tight end he can be. There's a chance this offense kind of shifts from outside to inside with Caden Priestcorn and Jordan Watkins. Um, so we'll see what happens. Jordan Watkins is quietly having an all SEC type of year. So let's get started with the keys to victory for the game. Now, first of all, the first key was getting those guys back. We don't know about Zachary Franklin. He's the guy that's kind of, we're kind of on wait and see watch. And whenever we put up the Jackson Dart zones yesterday, that side of the field, that position that Zachary plays, they're, they're, that's where the issue is at the moment. But in the middle of the field, over on Trey Harris's side, they're kind of doing some work. There's some there's some pretty gaudy NFL level numbers um, that Jackson Dart is putting up. So we'll start off with the keys to victory against Alabama. Um, number one is do not get beat by the helmet and reputation. We're going to handle that in the third segment of the show um, just because we're superstitious and we did that last week. Um, Jackson Dart needs to rise to meet his biggest challenge yet because this will be his biggest challenge yet. And don't let Milrow, Buckner, or Simpson, it looks like it's going to be Milrow, get comfortable. We'll talk about the zones and the zones of all three of the quarterbacks that Ole Miss might face this weekend as well but the reality is this is the biggest game in Jackson Dark's career now I realized that he went to Tiger Stadium as an undefeated quarterback last year LSU stormed the field the whole nine yards I, I get all of that this is the biggest game in Jackson Dark's career because of where he is as a quarterback and what it could possibly mean and everybody's like well the LSU game could mean a lot of stuff last year as well yeah but not what this could mean this could seriously be a game to where Jackson Dart makes a couple of plays. Everybody's watching because it's the 230 CBS game nationally. It might have 10 million viewers by the time this is all said and done. He puts up numbers, makes a couple of big plays, and all of a sudden he's in the Heisman discussion moving forward into LSU. This two-week period for Jackson Dart, if he plays really well, could get him to New York. I'm not even joking about that. This game, if Ole Miss can come out of Alabama and LSU just because of the story that Ole Miss is leading the West, that the national media is going to kind of run with and how big of a surprise it is and how great it is for little old Ole Miss to be leading the SEC West and all of that will be attributed to the play of Jackson Dart. And then you have Quinshawn Judkins. You have all the other players. I'm not saying they don't, but the biggest recipient could be Jackson Dart if Ole Miss can somehow pull off victories the next two weeks, and it starts in Bryant-Denny Stadium. Now, every 
challenge that we had given Jackson Dart. And I talked about this yesterday. Jackson Dart has made it and, and, and made it beyond our expectations. We want him to throw over the middle. This is a team that over the middle this season has been dynamic. Now, they even tried a pop pass against Georgia Tech that we've all been asking for them to see. Dead read, perfect, hit Michael Trigg in the heads. Michael Trigg dropped the ball. That was not Jackson Dart's fault. There was a couple of drops in this game. But if you look at what Jackson Dart has done this season, he's currently at 45 of 68, 852 yards, seven touchdowns, and one interception. That was not his fault. The receiver slipped down. Jackson Dart has been the epitome of awesome this season. He actually leads the team in rushing with over 200 yards and two touchdowns as well. You're looking at somebody, like I said yesterday, that we're looking for a comp for him because there's not really an Ole Miss comp for him at this moment. He is a different type quarterback than anybody that Ole Miss has had in the past. And if you look outside, it now he played at Florida. Florida won the national championship and he won the Heisman. But there's a lot of Tim Tebow in his game minus the funky throwing motion. If you want to look at an optimized Tim Tebow, that's kind of what Jackson does. Whenever Ole Miss needs a third and one, third and two, they're going to Jackson Dart running the football. Whenever um, Ole Miss needs big plays down the field, he's making big plays down the field. And as he gets more efficient, a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage, which he's not bad. He, he's a good player there as well. His game is really going to open up, and I think you will see him become a more dynamic quarterback as the season moves on. And it all starts with this environment at Brian Denny Stadium. Two years ago, okay, this is an example of that, and we're going to talk about this in the third segment as well. Two years ago, but we'll we'll kind of pay attention to that. Ole Miss went into Alabama. Lane Kiffin did the get through popcorn ready. They had Matt Corral. Ole Miss didn't have a good start to that game. They let the environment of Bryant-Denny Stadium control them. In the second half, they were a completely different team, put 21 points on the board, but the environment and everything going on inside that stadium, who they were playing, the elephant noise, the 78 national championship flags that they put out, um, including one with like a four and six record. Um, that got into their heads a little bit. They went for it. They coached a little bit different. It's a game where they're wired to really be something that they don't expect. If Jackson Dart can avoid that and just come out and play football, Alabama's in a little bit of trouble this game. Now, if you look at another player that is doing well, Jordan Watkins is quietly having an all-SEC caliber season, even without Trey Harris, without um, Zachary Franklin, Jordan Watkins has stepped up. There's not even really been a whole lot at the tight end position. It's been Jordan Watkins stepping up. He's averaging nearly 20 yards a catch. He has a punt return for a touchdown. He is a big play guy in this offense that is going to be a big play offense. Now, against Alabama, you get Trey Harris back. You get Caden Priestcorn back. And this offense can kind of start to look like it's going to look because of these weapons being on the field. And then um, maybe Zachary Franklin comes back. Maybe Zachary Franklin is back for LSU. But when this full complement of players get back on the field, there's a chance they could be really special. Now, the Ole Miss fan is going to be worried about when they all come back and it, if, if they are all together too late. Because this is the game that we needed all of them for. And we're wondering about Zachary Franklin. I think we're going to be fine. Alabama isn't what we thought they were. Um, Alabama still is good. And we'll talk, like I said, the third segment. Stick around for that. Um, but this is a situation where Ole Miss has the better quarterback. Ole Miss has the better running back. And with Trey Harris playing, they have the better wide receiver. Even without Trey Harris playing, they probably have the better wide receiver. They might have the best two wide receivers on the field. Offensive line is at best at Alabama been a question mark. At best. They have struggled as it started. And they're talking about having to play Jalen Milrow because the offensive line is struggling. You have a bunch of guys at 350 pounds. You can probably beat this team with speed. So we'll see what goes on, and we'll talk about that Alabama quarterback situation immediately following the break. 
SEC Network, I think I saw on Twitter, the SEC Network said that Jalen Milrow is probably going to start. There's rumors that Jalen Milrow last week was suspended, and that's the reason he didn't come in when Buckner got benched. Um, it is There's rumors that he didn't take the news of being demoted extremely well. There's rumors that the team basically in USF did a mutiny. Um, all of this is good news for Ole Miss, but also – everybody needs to remember this is Alabama. It's four and five star players. If any team can rise up, it's that team, but know that Ole Miss is in a better place than they have been in the past to deal with that as well. Now I do want to let you know that today's show is brought to you by the game time app, create an account, use the code locked on college for your, for $20 off your first purchase. Um, that is important to know. I kind of missed that at the beginning of the show. But I do want to let you know, you can snap into the action this NFL season with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 back in bonus bets, win or lose. You've been thinking about joining FanDuel, and now there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. as a wide range of betting options including lines and over-unders and money lines and things like that. Currently, Alabama is favored by seven points, and there's an over-under of 54 and a half points in this game. They're expecting kind of a low-scoring game. The money line right now is probably a pretty good bet. You can get Ole Miss plus 235. That, that seems like a good bet at the moment. So with FanDuel slash Locked On, kick off the NFL season. FanDuel is an official sponsor of the NFL. College football season is here, and this season Locked On is kicking up our coverage with Locked On College Football Live. Each Friday, Locked On will go live from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on every single college Locked On YouTube channel, including this one. College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, the conference rivalry games, and you can go in-depth on, on things like only Locked On can, including insight and analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their teams every day. Find Locked On College Football kickoff live every Friday from 11 to 1 Eastern on any Locked On College YouTube channel. You won't want to miss it. I've not missed an episode. It's a fantastic broadcast. They do a great job with it. To me, I like it just as much, if not better, than like Big Noon kickoff and College Game Day. And plus, it is on Friday, and you have it on demand going into Saturday. So there's really no excuse not to look at it. We want to get the numbers up as high as possible so that they keep doing this. So if you do me a favor, give that a watch on the live stream and um, or on demand when it comes out. So Alabama is in a unique situation. And this Alabama team is unlike any Alabama team that Ole Miss has played in the last 15 years. It's very not Saban-like. The defense has been pretty good. And Lane Kiffin um, did actually say, this we've we've been against Kevin a number of times and worked with him at Alabama and against him at Auburn and LSU. There seems like there's been a change there. Lane Kiffin noticed according to on three sports on Sunday. I don't know what happened after the Texas game, but our games are our guys are watching the TV copy and schematically in this last game. And there certainly seems like T Rob is now calling the defense. That's Traveris Robinson, um, former defensive coordinator at South Carolina. Now, okay, at Alabama, just so you know, they don't really necessarily schematically change anything. They, they, the coordinator has to adapt to what they're doing. So there might be some schemes and things that Traveris Robinson really liked, but I don't know if there's that much difference between um, Traveris Robinson and Kevin Steele. I think this is a situation where Lane is kind of playing 4D chess and um, just giving the media some red meat to throw on so they'll ask Nick Saban about it at his press conference yesterday and something that they'll talk about during the week, and it will become a conversation point. So you've got the quarterback. You've got that. You've got all of this stuff going on outside. Lane is using his social media awareness and his reach to kind of help create discord, for lack of a better word. That is what I think is happening there. I, don't, I think Kevin Steele is probably calling the defense. But the media is going to do it, and Nick Saban is going to have to answer for that now because of the reach of Wayne Kiffin. And you're going to see a shocked-looking Nick Saban when he gets that question as well. 
just kind of is what it is. Now, as it sits, Alabama has a quarterback situation on their hands, okay? I expect Jalen Milrow to play against Ole Miss, and this is his stats against the Texas Longhorn. He was 14-27, 255 yards, two TDs, two interceptions. But what gets interesting is when you look at these zones of Jalen Milrow, because he is he is a pretty good deep ball thrower. If you look at him in the, the deep third, he's two or three, 78 yards and a touchdown. That's nearly a perfect NFL passer rating, I think. Um, he is four for six in the middle, 136 yards and a touchdown. Same, 143.3 NFL passer rating both times. And outside right, he's one for two for 48 yards. Explosive plays are his game. And maybe that is because he runs so much and he is such a threat to run that people are kind of biting on double moves because they're afraid to play man coverage against him and what that could possibly mean. But if you look in the middle of the field, the 10 to 20 zone, um, both right, left, and center, and the short zone of 0 to 10, right, left, and center. And if you look in that middle zone, it was 1 for 3, 17 yards. The middle zone, 1 for 4, 39 yards. The outside right zone, 0 for 1, um, 0 yards. His NFL passer rating is 53, 67, and 39. It is not good. This is not a person that is going to drive the ball down the field on you. This is a person that is going to beat you with explosives. And if that's the way that we have to play, expect explosive plays to be called to where there's double moves, there's play action, stuff like that to where you can get him on the road and run and throw the ball downfield. Expect that. This is a major key of the game, explosive plays um, for Jalen Milrow. In the short, shorter zones, that's 0 to 10. He's 5 of 6, 46 yards. In the middle, he's 8 of 11, 48 yards. In the right, he is 2 for 2, 18 yards. He doesn't throw the ball in that zone very often, but it's mo mainly check downs to where people are not doing a lot of catch and run type situation. And at or behind the line of scrimmage, he actually has um, a 0 NFL passer rating and a 39 NFL passer rating. He is he is three for three for 19 yards in the middle of the field. Those are probably just check downs to the running backs. But after him, it actually gets really worse. If you look at Ty Simpson, and he was the good quarterback against USF, he was one for two, 45 yards deep. So he did complete a 45 yard pass. He did not complete outside right, outside left, or in that middle, that middle tic tac toe area. He completed one pass over 10 yards against USF. Um, under 10 yards, one for one, seven yards, three for three, 21 yards, one for one, five yards, one yard, one um, incomplete pass behind the line of scrimmage. That is probably a clock play if we're being honest about that. So not very good. Do you want to see it get worse? This is how it gets worse. This is Tyler Buckner, 0 for one, one for two, 0 for two on deep zones, 85 passer rating in the middle of the field. And then you look there in the 10 to 20 range, um, 0 for 2. He was 1 for 1 in the middle of the tic-tac-toe board, 0 for 0 on the outside. If you look at his passer rating, it's 39, 85, 39, 39. And that one that he completed the one pass, it was 118. All these shorter throws, 39, 62. Good gosh, this guy's not good. Um, Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not impressed with one Tyler Buckner. So you see that Alabama has a little bit of a problem, and I think it's going to be Jalen Milrow, but all of this noise around the program, they're going to have to fight that off this week. Now, luckily, this is a home game for them, which means if they were going to Death Valley this week, if they were even going to Vault hemingway Stadium or even next week's game against Mississippi State at Davis Wade, the noise and all that rattling the quarterback could be problematic even for a team as talented as Alabama. This is a game right now. I expect Ole Miss to win this game. I, I, am, I am in that camp where I expect Ole Miss to win this game. I expect Jackson Dart, Dart to play well. If you look at quarterbacks, Ole Miss's top three quarterbacks would probably start at Alabama. Absolutely nuts to think about that. But the top three quarterbacks would probably start at Alabama. Running backs, Ole Miss has the best running back on the field. Ole Miss has the best um, wide receiver on the field. Ole Miss probably has the best tight end on the field. Offensive line, Ole Miss wins. Now, if you flip it around, Ole Miss's defense has been a little bit clunky, okay, at times. 
and getting off on third down. I told you before the season started, that's the way it would be. They would be good at one or two things. Their whole job will be to get possessions back for the offense because of how explosive this unit could be. And they've done that. They've, they've been honestly pretty good. They've been pretty sound, good in the red zone. This is probably going to be the area that we can count on Ole Miss football and Ole Miss's defense moving forward. You're going to see them move. Uh, the opponents move between 20 and 20 quite a bit inside the 20 yard line. I mean, it it literally took a busted coverage um, for Georgia Tech to score inside the 20 on Saturday. Um, but we'll see exactly what can happen. Alabama is going to try and hit explosive plays all day against Ole Miss. Do not expect a situation to where Jalen Milrow is driving the team. They're trying to hit chunks. And Pete Golding needs to play Santarian Perkins most as a game, just as a spy. I, 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 I will take that. This is the game equivalent to what made Harold Perkins at LSU last year when he was the spy for Malik Hornsby against Arkansas. This is the game that is Santarian's version of that. His athleticism, he can spy um, – Jalen Milrow, and if that happens, if you take away the running game from Alabama, it, I think it's going to be very problematic. If you're just throwing hero balls every snap, that that's a hard way to be and a chance for a decent number of three and outs. Now, expect Ole Miss to run the ball or Alabama to run the ball quite a bit. I expect Ole Miss to run the ball. The quarterback run will be very important. Quinshawn will be very important because he is still going to get Alabama's attention. So we'll see exactly what happens. But one of the major keys to this game will be making sure that Jalen Milrow or whoever is playing quarterback for Alabama is not comfortable. They do not need to get into a rhythm. If they get into a rhythm, these are still four- and five-star players. It won't take much for them to get back and get right. It is important for Ole Miss to, and Ole Miss defensively to make him as uncomfortable as possible so they can't get right. And if that happens, the offense and everything, I don't know if Alabama, believe it or not, has the boys to um, completely keep that offense down the whole game. I think they will keep it somewhat low scoring if you look by the over-under of what's going on. But I think Ole Miss has a chance to put up some points. And if you told me that any team, either team, won in a boat race, it was Ole Miss pulling away from Alabama. This is a very, very weird game. And because of that, we're going to talk about the next segment. And that is kind of a history lesson of when Ole Miss has went into Bryant Denny Stadium, the better team, and how that went. And, and spoiler alert, it, it it did not go well. Anyway, do want to let you know that today's show is brought to you by the Game Time Ticketing app. 2014, I wanted to go see Ole Miss in Alabama in Vaught Hemingway Stadium. It was about Wednesday of that week, and that game was a hard sellout, if you remember what that was like. Game day was here. The whole nine yards, I wanted to experience that. So I went on, and I tried to find as much tickets as possible, ended up overpaying and going to the game. And that was before GameTime.co and the GameTime ticketing app was a thing because – their whole thing is buying tickets to your favorite event should not be stressful. They have images of the seat views. I could tell you exactly where I was and what it looked like. You can forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, all of that good stuff. The game time guarantee also means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section, um, and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. That's pretty awesome. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason, people. Get images of those seats, like I said, before you buy. So you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. You can buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Click, click, you're there. It's done. They're sent directly to your phone so you never have to deal through your, e um, through your ego um, email. And you can snag those tickets without stress with game time. Download the, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. 
The Rebels play the Alabama Crimson Tide Saturday at 2.30 Central. The next evolution of an explosive offense should be on tap for all of us to witness, and you can catch every play of the Rebels home team broadcast with Sirius XM on channel 191 or on the SXM app, searching Ole Miss Rebels, the Locked On Ole Miss podcast as well. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis, and this is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, and we have hit the third segment to where I tell people we, we've been in this position before where Ole Miss has went to Bryant-Denny Stadium in a game that they probably should win. Now, Bama's favorite, and they're going to be because public's going to be all over Bama, but that is a line at this point that is based off of rep- reputation as opposed to what has actually been shown this season. But Alabama is going to be favored. It's going to grow, but it's about the same level that Alabama was favored over Texas so kind of take it what it's, for what it's worth. But Ole Miss has come into this game in a similar situation in the past. Ole Miss was kind of the better team in 2000. It was kind of the better team in 2002. Actually, they did beat Alabama in 2021, or two, 2001 and 2003. But the two games in the interim were at Brian Denny Stadium. And Ole Miss needs to be careful that they don't drop the games. Don't let the helmet beat you. Whenever the elephant starts going off and they threw out their 75 national championships, uh, do not do not just put in what you're facing. Actually play the team in front of you and not the reputation of the team. Because if you look back to 2000, Alabama won that game. If you look, Ole Miss was the, the had a better record coming into it. Alabama was just three and three. They beat Ole Miss 45 to seven. And if you go to 2002 with Eli Manning, Alabama won that game 42-7. to These are are two absolute boat race games where Ole Miss absolutely let the helmet beat them. So whenever I say don't let the helmet beat you, that is what I mean. Alabama's got all the history in the world. And in the past... They have Ole Miss has not had the depth to play with Alabama. So you would see see a situation to where Ole Miss needed to jump on Alabama and withstand the furious comeback at the end. We all remember those games. But this Ole Miss team has a little bit more talent. If you look at their halftime stats, they're outscoring people like 101 to 23 at the moment. Um, That is because of depth. That is because of depth of talent to where your special teams and things like that are in a better place because this is the dirty little secret. I think everybody can remember like when Ed Orgeron was at Ole Miss and Ole Miss played with LSU um, that night, everybody know, everybody remembers that game, a game that went that Ole Miss looked like they should have won the game. There's always a special teams play that would, come unglued that would allow LSU or whoever Ole Miss was playing in that time period to to make just enough to get the W. And that is because the depth of talent, the players on the roster from player number 25 to player number 50 were significantly better than those players that were playing for Ole Miss. So there was a drop off on special teams because you can't play everybody every play. Ole Miss has the ability where they've cut that down significantly to the point where Alabama, as much talent as they have, and they have the most talented roster in the Southeastern Conference, maybe maybe behind Georgia. I, I, I still think Alabama may be more ahead. Just Alabama doesn't have a quarterback. But even with that, if you look at special teams, Ole Miss can still compete. And I'm not worried about those crazy plays to happen because all of a sudden somebody got injured and the next player couldn't step up to that level. So be ready to go. Understand exactly what's going to happen. Um, But there has been situations. This is the scar tissue that Ole Miss fans deal with, but it was because of that depth of talent. I think Ole Miss can compete with them as long as they play clean, take care of the football, and do not get rattled by the environment that they're going to walk into like like Matt Corral was in 2021, I think Ole Miss is going to be in good shape. And and when you have Jackson Dart, you kind of can put up with the moment um, at any given moment. I mean, he's met every expectation that we've had. And I, I'm expecting him to meet this one as well. 
So thank you again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. It's Alabama week. We're getting into it. We have Jason Simmons. We have Michael Borky. We, we have a lot of stuff coming up for everybody this weekend. Anyway, until then, we'll see you later. Hotty toddy.